Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, if you hear the uh I'll react to that, sure thing, you know, I'm I'm upload I'm creating a video. It, it might happen, okay? So preemptive like I don't see how it's a big deal, but apparently it, it's annoying to some who will rename remain I can't talk. Why did it take so long for France to conquer, conquer Brittany? So Brittany, um, I mean, it showed it in the thumbnail. It's like that north, I don't even know if you can call it a penance. It's like the, it looks kind of like um, Cornwall, like that same. Anyways, let's go. This is a disaster of me introing. The original link to the video, top of the description, from History Matters, awesome channel. Let's go. And Discord. Nowadays, that was a terrible intro. I'm sorry, but, you know, I can't win them all. Brittany. Or any. Here is nowadays very much a part of France. It formally joined it in 1547, having been independent for roughly the previous 600 years. But given that Brittany's neighbor was much larger, far more powerful, and shared its only land border, how did Brittany manage to hold out for so long? Why didn't France take Brittany centuries earlier? To begin, as of the mid-8th century, Brittany was divided into numerous small states. The Frankish kingdom next door realized that conquering the Britons there would be tough, and so instead they appointed one of the region's rulers to collect tribute from the rest on their behalf. This arrangement didn't last too long because several decades later, Vikings. The raiding along the Frankish Empire's coast meant that its attention was needed elsewhere, and so Brittany was free to rebel. This saw it gain some freedom for a short time, because like everybody else in Northern Europe, they too had to deal with the Vikings. Like many other small states- Guys, so were the Vikings always trying to- it's just that until the collapse of the Roman Empire, they really couldn't do much, and so once the Roman Empire was gone, then- it was pillaging season again, right? Brittany was like everybody else in Northern Europe, they too had to deal with the Vikings. Like many other small states, Brittany wasn't able to resist and found itself ruled by Norsemen until the mid-9th century. This was when the grandson of the last independent Breton ruler, Alan, was aided by King Ethelstan of England in reconquering Brittany. He was successful and thus became its duke, with Brittany becoming independent. In the century after this, Brittany was a mess of rebellions, and despite its weakened state, France never invaded. And the reason why was that the French nobles, whose lands neighbored Brittany, intermarried with Brittany's rebels and laws which made intervention a problem. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't long until the rulers of Brittany- What did he say? And, and also, uh, names like Angevin and a Aquitaine, I need to learn those. France independent. In the century after this, Brittany was a mess of rebellions, and despite its weakened state, France- Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. The My god, I'm sorry. A century after this, Brittany was a mess of rebellions, and despite its weakened state, France never invaded. And the reason why was that the French nobles whose lands neighbored Brittany intermarried with Brittany's rebels and laws which made intervention a problem. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't long until the rulers of Brittany were soon dealing with the kings of France personally, who were very interested in keeping the duchy in line. Their opponents at this time were, of course, the kings of England, and both royal houses competed for the duchy's friendship. And it was this competition that gave the duchy a much greater degree of independence than it could have hoped for normally. Brittany's position meant that it was valuable for England to open up another front in a war against France if it needed to. And for France, robbing England of that ability was worth giving any loyal duke some extra freedoms. And after England lost the Hundred Years' War, the only major state with a stake in Brittany was France, which didn't make any plans to invade or reduce the duchy's freedoms. So why? Well, first of all, France was broke and exhausted, and so launching an expedition which would cost money and also leave it open to attack from Spain or the Holy Roman Empire was a no-no. And at this point, if you couldn't conquer a land, there was always Plan B. Wait for the ruler to only have a daughter and marry her. Which is what happened in 1498 when Duke Francis II died, leaving only his daughter Anne to rule the duchy. To protect the duchy from France, it was agreed that Anne would marry the heir to the Holy Roman Empire, Maximilian von Habsburg. It couldn't be done in person because travel had its risks, and so it was done remotely. This annoyed the King of France, Charles VIII, because he didn't want Brittany being ruled by his rival next- Sorry, G- Empire, Maximilian von Habsburg. It couldn't be- Jesus, just kind of cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He just looks annoyed. He done in person because travel had its risks, and so it was done remotely. This annoyed the King of France, Charles VIII, because he didn't want Brittany being ruled by his rival next door, and so he politely asked for it to be annulled. By which, I mean he invaded. After defeating the Bretons, Charles forced Anne to marry him and sent her to Paris and using his own nobles to run Brittany in her stead. 
The two didn't have any heirs, and so when Charles VIII opted to spend some time in the afterlife and returned to Brittany. For like five minutes, because Charles's successor and cousin Louis XII had the same quarrel with an independent Brittany, and so Anne was forced to marry again. This time, they did have children, and the eldest, Claude, was married to the next King of France, Francis I, whose son, Henry, would go on to inherit both the Duchy of Brittany and the Kingdom of France. At which point, the title of Duke of Brittany was abolished, and the lands thereafter were simply ruled by the King of France, thereby ending Brittany's 600 year streak of independence against France's wishes. I hope you enjoyed this episode with the special. Um, so again, guys, th this channel is not for deep looks in. This is a, this channel is for exactly what I'm about to ask questions about. I want to learn more about Louis the the twelfth. I know Louis the fourteenth is a big deal, Sun King, right? Louis the sixteenth, uh, not a good. Uh... <laughs> um, but I, again, this this channel. I love it because it lets my simple mind, I, I have a hard time concentrating sometimes, all right? As you might notice if you've watched a single video of mine. But sometimes if I get a general overview of a subject, then I can be like, okay, that's the general stuff. And, and I hate going into a subject and just going more in depth, like, okay, like one step at a time. I like going, okay, quick over over through maybe another more medium one Ooh, what is that look into that look into that and that's how i'm i can more successfully learn about something because if not i stand no chance cool video again there, there are certain terms like angevin that uh, i want to learn up on and rulers like louis the 12th so cool video would appreciate any comments at all especially if I said something uh, or if a question I asked or something like that, but any would be appreciated. Hope you guys are doing well. See you next time. Bye, guys.